Greetings, it's Dr. Burnett, publisher and pusher. The all body place of encouragement, cultural empowerment. Weekly, she'll engage conversations with entrepreneurs and creatives. And these insightful interviews are designed to help us build our businesses, respective brands, ourselves, and to hopefully propel us to that next level of greatness, Big Boss. So with no time to waste time, it's officially go time. Hi, everyone. Dr. Annette, publishing pusher here. I'm having another chat on this evening with a friend of mine, y'all, uh, Shante Williams. How are you, Shante? I am wonderful, Dr. West. How are you? Doing great. Um, you know, I've been connected to Shante for several years now. Um, I, I can't even remember the first time we met. I think we said this before. I don't remember the first time I met her, but it seems like I've just known her for some reason. <laughs> But uh, we've had the opportunity to work on some projects together. I've been to some of the things that she has offered, and I'm sure that she has a plethora of information and insights that she's going to share with you on today. So we always want to get to who is this author. So I'm going to ask Shantae to tell you all a bit about her, who she is, how she got started, what she's doing. Hello, everybody. I'm so excited to be on this podcast. Thank you, Dr. West, for having me. So who am I? That's like a, a loaded question. You know, um, many people don't know this, but before I got into um, publishing and really doing books, I was a chef. I went to culinary school, I actually graduated culinary school, and I thought I would be in the food industry like forever. Like that was my dream to open up a restaurant. However, when I relocated from Mississippi to South Carolina, things just didn't go well. It was hard for me to get my foot um, in the industry here. Um, I was always doing things and donations, trying to get my name out and everybody would love it, but nobody wanted to invoice. And so I was like, this ain't gonna work. <laughs> you know, you can't eat all for free all the time. You know, people, oh yeah, if you'll just donate, no, I'm gonna need you to pay. And so I had to pivot, you know, I had to pivot before we all had to pivot. And I had already had a um, a few books published um, prior to this. And so I was like, let me just see if this going to work. And I'm going to be honest, I was kind of scared. And I was like, God, everybody's doing this. I don't know. You know how sometimes you, you don't know if it's you talking to you or if it's God giving you instructions. <laughs> and so I think I'm going to be smart, right? So I was like, you know what? I'm going to put this course together. I'm going to see if anybody registers. And I ain't even put the course together. I just start advertising. Even put a Facebook ad on everything. Lo and behold, I got the first registration and I said, oh crap, I've got to write this course. <laughs> and so after that, that was kind of my introduction into the publishing industry as a business. And so that was the end of 2018. So 2019, I made it official and made it a full-fetched business. Um, I started out under a different name, um, Greater Working Women Publishing um, Company, and then I rebranded in 2019. I think, to um, Relentless Publishing House for the, so it can be more marketable for my male clients because they would always ask, well, do you help men? Because the name, it gave the impression that I only help women. And so since then, I have had the privilege and ple pleasure of helping a lot of aspiring authors to um, publish their books for the first time. And it's it's been a joy. And I'm just now getting back to, hey, you are an author too. And so I'm just now trying to get back into, okay, you've got to start promoting your stuff because you're just, you're just letting this stuff get dust and nobody really knows it's like ghost town. So now I'm in this stage where I have to make time for me as an author, because if I can't do what I'm teaching my clients to do, I'm like a bad coach, <laughs> you know? So I'm trying to take a cup of my own medicine and really get back out there as an author, um, to let people know who I am, that I don't just help people, that I also help myself on occasionally. So, you know, that's me in a nutshell. And I love it. I absolutely love it. I have one daughter. Um, she's my favorite daughter. <laughs> and she is a mama's girl. You, We always talk about mama's boys. She is a straight up mama's girl. She's grown. And she'll tell you, mm -mm, I got to call my mama first. <laughs> <laughs> yes. A blessing, a blessing, a, a blessing. So one of the words I heard you say was pivot. Yes. Such a powerful five-letter word, but very powerful. And I, I hear you saying sometimes what we think we're going to do 
even though we may start out doing it, may not be the final direction. And actually, you probably aren't even at the final direction even yet, if you think about it. Nope. What do you think about that? Nope, not at all. And it's so funny that, you know, I really thought because I'm passionate about cooking a bacon, and it still is, it's just not a business. And I, my daughter always tries to pull me back in. I say, I don't do that no more, Kiana. <laughs> don't be telling folks your mama going to do that. I don't do that no more. But I love knowing that I don't have to, that if I want to, it's an option, you know? And I never thought that would be part of my life. I always thought that was the A, B, C option. And it's so funny, you know, we make our own plans. <laughs> and, you know, as they say, make the plans, give God the eraser. And that's what he did. He didn't erase it completely out. It's just not my main two. And so while it, it took me a minute to get over it, like I really had to reason myself like, it's not the end of the world, Chante. You have other gifts and it's okay. So sometimes we get stuck on one gift and we neglect the other ones. But th when we have to pivot, we realize, oh, all of my gifts are important. And I think that's what God was telling me that you're not stuck in this one lane. You're not one dimensional. We are all multidimensional, which means whichever way you have to pivot, you have to be able to do it at a moment's notice. Yeah. Um, when I think about um, you, Shante, I do. I think books, 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 books. <laughs> Because that's what I've seen from you, the majority of the, even though I've known about the chef part and I've seen some of those goodies that you baked, um, I've known the predominant aspect of you as, as a book publisher. Um, one of the things you mentioned was promoting self. So as a publisher, you're always meeting the needs because people have vested in you. So you're always meeting their needs, taking care of them. And now that you know that you need to promote yourself, it's not that you didn't know. It's not, it's not that we don't know this. It's just that um, sometimes there's a little cloud because we're busy doing all of this other stuff. Yeah. Um, that had to get done. That had to get done. That part. Because when people invest in you, to get their stuff done, they don't want to see you got two books just came out and they book not done. So what have you thought about in respect to moving forward in promoting? So one of the things oh. that I'm going to do is I'm going to probably pick like one day a week and use that as um, a promotional day for just me. Mm. Um, and also using it as a hey, I'm also my own client. So you're, I'm not only promoting myself, but I'm also promoting my business at the same time. But I really want to get more into, because when I started writing these books, Dr. West, I wrote them to inspire, empower, and equip women, you know, to get a closer relationship with God and to make sure that they know what their purpose is. And I've sat on that and sitting on that, I realized I'm not doing my, my audience a service. I have fallen by the wayside by making excuses. So mm -hmm. I'm definitely going to get back into sending my monthly emails out list to my mailing list, the picking a day of week to promotion, going live and talking about, you know, the different books that I've had. People don't even realize how many books I've actually wrote. And it's kind of embarrassed to tell you because you don't, because I don't promote any of them, <laughs> you know, and I just, I don't even like to think about it. And so I'm just, I'm going to make it a priority. And then I'm going to use it as teaching lessons to my clients. Don't get so caught up in serving that you forget to serve the most important part of your, which is you. That's, you know, that's, that's real good. And actually, we just had this conversation actually this morning with someone um, in, in the publishing space. And um, I have the S the S3 model, which says, if you don't show up, people don't know you exist. If you don't speak out, people don't know you have something to say. And if you don't share it, then people don't know what's in your toolbox. So you got to show up, speak out, and share it. And that's not just for Shantae. That's for Dr. Annette as well, okay? <laughs> I love it. I love it. That 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 is That is for me, and that's a challenge for myself. 
I even said, okay, I'm going to take less book books in, less clients in so that I can focus on what God has given me individual to 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 groom and to develop out here. And so I like um you, you're talking about, you know, some of your marketing plans for yourself is, you know, showing up one day a week, getting back to some of those live videos. But let me ask you a question. Because there's so many different social plas platforms out here. <laughs> I mean, they're everywhere. And every day you look, there's two or three more popping up. What do you think for the author when they're trying to get their content out? Do you think they need to focus on a few maybe sites and not go to try to go to everyone and if you think it's a few what would be the advantage right so that's a great question so i always tell um, people first you have to know where your audience is just because it's popular doesn't mean that's where you need to be and i remember when i first started i was so overwhelmed thinking i had to be on every platform and i have all these accounts and it's hard to keep up because you just can't post once and then go ghost for 2 3 weeks you got to be consistent so you have to see where your audience is then you have to master it how many things can you master at one time you know what i'm saying I mean, you really got to master it so once you master it then you add another piece and it doesn't mean that you don't have that piece before, but you can't spend a whole lot of time trying to master several platforms at the same time because it's time consuming. I mean, if you're really trying to do it right, you got to study it. You got to look at the analytics. I mean, you really you really have to dig deep and you got to take some classes on it to people who master that specific platform to see, you know, what is some wisdom, what are some, um, you know, shortcuts that they can give you um, in the process. So you have to figure out where your audience is. I tell people, and I give this an analogy, if you're writing a book for millennials and you're promoting on Facebook, you miss the mark. The millennials are not on Facebook. My daughter tells me, mama, Facebook for old people. And I'll be wanting to say, you calling me old? <laughs> you know, but you have to know where your audience is to know where you're going to be effective. And don't worry about, you know, well, only I'm only getting one or two engagement. That's one or two you, you never had. You've got to be consistent and you got to be dedicated to build your audience up on that platform. People have to know you're not flaky, that you're just not showing up for a transaction, but you want to create relationship. And so I think the advantage is mastering one at a time and then adding the other ones as long as your audience is active on where you're trying to go. Now you can be on other platforms if you if you are collaborating with somebody. I mean, that collaboration is still great currency. And I think sometimes we miss that because we're so focused on trying to be the next viral thing, the next trending thing that we forget that relationships, you know, you and I have developed a relationship um, from day one and we've stayed connected, you know? We we have lost the value in connection because we're trying to outdo one another. Mm, that's good. That's real good. And so I, what I'm what I thought when you said that is, what God has for me, it is for me. So I don't have to worry about what Shantae is doing. I should be excited for what Shantae is doing and see how I can fit in what Shantae is doing instead of trying to go and create what Shantae is doing, which is really duplicating resources and everything else. Absolutely. And we, people don't want to come together. They don't want to pull their resources. They they want their voice to be heard first. I don't care who voice get heard first if we getting it done. That that's the way, that's the way I look at it. Me too. One of the things you mentioned was <clears throat> finding Yo, finding your uh, where your tribe is, finding where your people are, and in finding where your people are, you also mentioned if if it's just one person showing up, if it's just two people showing up. Um, I remember when I first got on this platform, Clubhouse, and I was running this publishing room, and it wasn't a whole bunch of people coming in. And one time there was only like two or three people coming in, but you got to show up. If you're committed, you show up. It doesn't matter how many people are there. And, and with one or two people in the room, plus myself that day, one of those people wind up being my client. 
So it's not the numbers, y'all. It's being consistent so people know where you are and that you're showing up so that people know that they can see and hear you. And that might be the one person that's been following you because people don't typically purchase from you Am I correct, Shantae? The first time they hear you say something. Now, if you at a book event or something, the likelihood that you're going to get some sales is good, okay? But if if you're on these social platforms, people don't know you from nobody else, okay? What say you, Shantae? Listen, and statistics say they have to see it seven times before they decide. And I know personally how many times I've looked at something that I thought was really great and then I still went on. Or I even went and put it in the cart and I still went on. And they had to send me an email saying, are you going to buy what's in your cart? And I still went on. <laughs> yes. So if we know that other people are doing that and we do it to others, why do we think that as soon as we offer something, everybody supposed to jump onto it? it's the funniest thing and, and then you know people get up in arms well my family and friends won't and I'm sitting here saying did you write it for them <laughs> that's, I tell that's people, like the cherry on top people, it's nice if they bought it Please. but most people don't not you're not gonna sell the bulk of your books from no family and friends I'm gonna tell you that now they might be happy for you but even most of the happy ones I've been really blessed my my family buy they buy everything. I'd be like, why are you getting that book? Cause you wrote it. But normally that's not the norm, y'all. That's not the norm. <laughs> they be like, oh, you just gonna give me one? You didn't go to the library, and 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 take that book out, and know that if you didn't to return that book, there was gonna be consequences. <laughs> so uh, don't be thinking that after we didn't did all of this work to get this book done. Sweat, tears, sometimes tears, really, y'all. I'm telling yes. you, as soon as you think you got it right, then it's like, oh my goodness gracious, I had to go redo something. Oh my goodness, what this happened, that happened. And you like, you've spent all of these hundreds, hundreds, hundreds of hours on this. Pro might even be a thousand hours on that project. Might just be. For somebody to say, will you give me that? I know. Not good, y'all. Not good. I, you know, I always like to say, if you want it, be willing to invest in it. If you want it. And now, if I say, if you say, do you have your book? And I'll be like, yeah, I got some copies. Um, you can get a copy today for $10. Mm -hmm. That's my that's my choice. That's my option to say that. That's mm -hmm. not for you to say, can I get your $20 book for $10? No. Right. <laughs> right. And we know the reality is, because we know mm -hmm. we buy what we want to buy. Absolutely. And what we don't want to buy, we, we don't, don't buy. <laughs> so we, we figure when we got our stuff out there, the people don't buy it. That's just not what they want today. It's okay. They might it want is. it another day. They might not. I mean, I've had people to say, well, I don't, I don't, I don't need this book, but I can buy it for my sister. Mm -hmm. Or I could buy it for somebody mm -hmm. else. Mm hmm so even though it may not be for them or what they're looking for in this season, they may see that somebody else they know like cooking, like hell, you know, like a devotional. Mm -hmm. You make the difference. Absolutely. It's your personality. It's how you draw them in. And a lot of times we don't, we forget the relationship part. And it's just like, bye, bye, bye. You sound like a used car salesman. <laughs> And we don't want to sound like the used car salesman. No, because everybody <laughs> hates a used car salesman. <laughs> we don't want to, we don't want to turn them off. We want to draw them, draw them to us. So in, in speaking about drawing them to us, and we know you have your publishing company, but we also know now that you are also a publisher. You're a publisher. That means you have your own books with your own name on them, your own content that you have written. I've been blessed to be a part of one of your collaborations. And <clears throat> But I want you to talk today about a book that you have getting ready to come out. And yes. I believe you people can purchase it now. They can get their pre-order sales in, the pre-orders in. And it's called Dear Single Woman. What? I mean, I know you're a single woman. But what made you want to write a book with that title? 
So this this book um, for me is not only personal experiences, also experiences that I've had the privilege to witness firsthand. And it just got me to thinking about, you know, all the things as women that we put on as responsibility for the man. So first of all, this is not a male bashing book. Let me just put that out there. I don't do that. <laughs> I don't do that at all. This is about reminding women that we are responsible for our own happiness. We are responsible to be aware of the red flags and make a decision as to whether or not we're going to ignore them or take them for what they are and decide to go another way. This is reminding women that we are responsible for knowing our purpose in life. It helps us to choose mates wisely. Mm. You know, it's really for us to look in the mirror and say, okay, if this is what I want, I'm not settling. And if you can't give me what I want, it doesn't make you a bad person. It just means we're not a good fit. We can probably be friends, but we will never go beyond that. And so this is just a reminder for us women to realize um, the power is really in our hands. You know, a lot of times we get caught up because we do things prematurely and then we get upset and we're mad and, oh, he was a dog and yada, yada. And he may have been. However, if we're honest, he he showed us who he was in the beginning. But we thought, oh, I can change him. You know, I'm going to love him right and I'm going to do this. And he's going, no, 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 no. I learned the hard way. People change if they want to, not because of you. You know, and this is life is life. It's not a fairy tale. This is not Cinderella. Sometimes we get caught up in this reality and fantasy TV and we forget we're in real life dealing with real people. That's not scripted. That's scripted TV. This is real life. And so that's what made me want to write this. Now, I have been writing this book for too long now. And I told myself, <laughs> Um, I was not going to allow another year go by and I did not finish and complete it. It was supposed to have been out for my birthday, which was October the 1st. But I said I was going to make sure it got out in the fall. So that is why I'm writing Dear Single Woman. You know, I heard, um, and I, I think that's great, um, Shantae, and it will really bless a lot of, <clears throat> a lot of women. Um, I heard... Um, I think it was Steve Harvey was talking to some men and he said, it just made me think of this when you were talking. He said, um, there's only one woman that a man will change for. He said, he, she might, he might have many women, but there's only one woman that he is going to change for. And that is the one that he wants to be with for the long haul. Yep. Mm -hmm. So he was saying, I didn't change with the first one. I didn't change with the second one. But by the time the third one came along and she was ready to leave, I was like, no, I got to keep this one. <laughs> but, you know, dear single woman, I, I would think, but it's not, this is not a book about um, waiting for a, a spouse. This is a book about looking at yourself and finding your own self. Yes. Yes, it is. Yeah, this is, yeah, this is not, um, this is not dating advice. You know, this is not trying to tell you how to get a man, how to keep a man. This is not what that is. This is really more of self-discovery and understanding that whatever I want is what I want. And it's, I actually have a piece in the book that says, you know, um, when it, and I talk about how a man, he may sleep with you for three years. And after that, married another one after he's only dated them for six months because that woman was the one for him. You know, and a lot of times we get, I can't believe it. You just won the one. You settled. You know, and men are not dumb. We 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 don't give them as much credit as they deserve. They're very intelligent. They'll play dumb if it means they can get what they want. <laughs> you know? Well, no. <laughs> So this this is good. I, I love I love the title. So when we think about our niche market, and I know you focus this book on single women, um, I was just thinking that this would be a really good resource for high school girls who are going to be stepping out into their adulthood soon. Mm -hmm. A lot of times we try to give books to people when they're over here. 
And by then they've messed all of this stuff up and they've gotten all of this stuff wrong. What do you think? What do you think about that? You know what? You make a very great point. And I actually hadn't even considered that in my marketing. Um, but I'm definitely going to go back and think about that because what you're saying is really good. <clears throat> that high school senior going off to college or even going off to technical school or wherever they're going, you know, maybe they're going to the military. It doesn't matter. You know, before they before they make too many mistakes, you know, in relationships, allowing them to read this and be like, OK, this is what that looks like, because I share a personal experience where I've messed up and I thought that was the one. And I realized it never could be because you settled. And what I learned is when you settle in one area, you settle in every area because it seeps over. Mm, that's good. You know, um, just a thought. I was I was thinking about um, how sometimes authors start with a thought and they create this first book. But after that first book is done, they have people from all of these different areas that are asking them about that book. And then before you know it, um, they've gone back and they've adjusted and modified. And so... I'm, I'm hearing dear single young girl. <laughs> yeah. Dear single uh, female teens, you know, the young adults. But I I, I, I can see the same concept mm -hmm. being adjusted and, and adjusted, especially since you had a teenage daughter. Yeah. That I'm sure she has perspective on things for that younger generation of of course, we all have some of our own stories that can fit in there, but sometimes tapping and tying into younger people, but mm -hmm. I definitely could see that with a, a younger group. I could actually see you doing a beta group also. Yeah, that's, that's, um, it becomes a whole movement. Yes. And that's well, the power of one book. You already got a movement, so you just add another element to the movement and there you, you just go. move a little more. <laughs> You just move a little bit more. So um, before Shantae, um, I, before we came on, I was telling you a little bit about this AI thing. So what do you think about AI in respect to book authors? Do you have any thought on this at all? <laughs> Listen, this has been a touchy subject since day one. I'm in several um, author groups with a lot of big name people and people are in an uproar. And I understand, you know, where they're coming from. And here's what I tell, because um, I actually taught a class on it. It's a resource. It's not to write your book. AI cannot take away the experience and the knowledge of a human because it's taking information from already um, written sources and putting it together. And so I showed them um, if you're having, if you're trying to come up with a topic, right? And you may say, give me some topics on self-love. And it may give you maybe 10 topics. You can take a topic and then say, okay, you know what? That's what I was trying to say, but I didn't know how to articulate it. You don't tell it to write the book for you because then you're not the author. And in my opinion, it's dishonest. Now you may, you know, whoever's watching this may think differently. However, as a person who still writes, you know, <laughs> Um, I can't, if I'm going to pay somebody else to write for me, then I'm hiring a ghostwriter. AI is not a ghostwriter. It is technology and y'all, AI is not new. I hope y'all realize that, that AI has been used in government and military for a very long time. They're just making it public. So um, in this, in this, in this way, because really when you use a GPS, you're using AI. When you talk to Siri, you're using AI. So we've been, we've been using it in some people like, oh my freaking out, but we've been using it in many ways already. Think about Grammarly, mm -hmm. you know, all of those whiting aids that we use to clean up our documents. That's a form of AI. Um, and so I just, you know, if you want to use it to help you with a thought, Yes, but not to write a book. For instance, you know, I've, well, I've used it in business as write a thank you letter, you know, or write a welcome on board letter. And I'll read it and I'm thinking, okay, I like that sentence, but I'm still going to make it sound like me, you know, trying to spruce it up and to come with a 
higher quality of writing, but I'm not going to use it to write a book because it can't write this book for me. It didn't experience what I experienced. You know what I'm saying? And I don't need you taking somebody else's experience and making it my own. So that's my thoughts. Yeah, final thought on that AI. Uh, the guy that I was listening to doing some training on AI, he said um, he used it. It was a very creative thought. He said um, he needed a 100 word bio. So he input a 600 word bio in that he had and he asked it to um streamline it down with only the specifics and 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 um insightful details and he says some way somehow <laughs> that ai gave him a hundred words with all the significant points that it would have taken him forever to to pull out but it was his content yes that's the difference and so i do have to agree and as as um and as Christians and as children of the most high, we are supposed to do things as unto the Lord. And so we have to be very careful that just because it's available, I like to say just because you can doesn't mean you should. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we have to be mindful of that. So Shante, we are at the end of the road. Um, I would like for you to um leave a lasting thought with everyone and also to let them know how they can reach you and get this book. Dear single woman, I hear a song coming, write a song too, Shante. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. West. And you know, I just want to encourage you out there, um, no matter how long it takes you to write the book, write the book. You know, I actually started writing this, I think in like 2018 or 2019, y'all, it's 2023. So even sometimes as we are teaching and coaching people, we fall off the bandwagon. Don't get discouraged, pick it back up and keep moving forward. So you can pre-order Dear Single Woman on my website, greaterwomen.com. Um, and we will get those out to you hopefully um, before Christmas is my goal. All right. We're going to be looking for that book before Christmas. She yes. said so <laughs> it's done <laughs> that just means she got to stretch herself to get it out there but she she can do it i can do it <laughs> she's showing up she's speaking out and she's sharing what she has so just remember that everybody so thank you again shante for being on the show today i appreciate you thank you so much dr west i have enjoyed myself as always you are so gracious and so um, I just love you. You're just so Thank full you. of wisdom and full of expertise and you don't mind sharing. And I absolutely, you know, and this just goes to show y'all, there's no hurt in collaborating with somebody in the industry with you. It doesn't diminish anybody's gift. It just, it just enhances it. So thank you for enhancing um, what I do by being connected to you. Thank you, Shante. I appreciate you. Love you, sis. All right, everybody. So I just want to say to everybody that's listening on today, you are blessed to be a blessing. And remember, you are the visible manifestation of his invisible presence. So I need you to shine wherever you go and let the world see him through you. All right, everybody. Catch you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you, everyone, for listening to Dr. Vanessa's Chat Podcast, brought to you by John A. Publishing. Be sure to stay tuned in for future conversations and engagements. Check out the website, jotnapublishing.org, and subscribe to this show on your preferred podcast app. Shout out to Donnie Five for the production. Be blessed and be a blessing. Peace.